Yeah, well, guys, welcome back. Campus Waterfowl uh, podcast episode here with the fellas from UW-Stevens Point, correct? Yes, sir, UW-Stevens Point, Central Wisconsin. Perfect. Perfect. So we're going to introduce ourselves quick. Derek's not on this run, so Sam and I are stepping in for him. So this is Sam. I'm Kyle. Uh, we're running this one for Derek this weekend with the... I'm Logan. I'm the president of Wisconsin-Stevens Point Ducks Unlimited Chapter. Perfect. Uh, my name's Sam Kordaki, but everyone calls me Ducky, and I'm our research and conservation chair of the UW Stevens Point chapter. Good deal, fellas. So we didn't do, there wasn't a Ducks Unlimited at the University of Iowa where we went to school. So um, how about you guys just start, just give us a little rundown about your guys' DU chapter at UW Stevens Point members, kind of stuff like that. Yeah, sounds good. So our chapter started, and I believe it was 2016, um, started out really small, and I kind of got in about 2020. That's when I first came to school during COVID, and it kind of all started as just a Zoom meeting during that time. Couldn't have in-person meetings or lectures or anything about that for essentially any work at the time, just because everybody is so scared of COVID. And it kind of turned into something now where, you know, it was just purely people coming in to talk about DU and like who we are and stuff like that to now we've completely moved out of the classroom and we're doing real world applications like we're we actually just adopted the meat wildlife area it's one of the largest uh waterfowl production areas in wisconsin um and we're doing a bunch of research out there now and banding throughout the you know we're doing a bunch of banding projects this upcoming spring here um we're currently working with the parasite biology lab on campus and we're really making a lot of big strides in the research world we actually had a uh, new parasite discovered out of that lab last semester that was shot out of the meat wildlife area that one of our members did collect. So kind of a cool little backstory there, but you know, our chapter is coming a long way. And uh, yeah, I mean, Ducky, you want to talk a little bit about it too? Yeah. So like, like Logan was saying, when I first started, I was a lot just in the classroom having meetings, you know, maybe talking about like for myself, especially, it was kind of cool. Just like, what do you need to get into duck hunting tips and tricks, that kind of stuff. And then once hunting season ended, really get into like all oh, the banquet, and, like we're trying to raise money and here's how all that money's being used. To now we've really evolved that something we did this year that we've done in the past, we brought back and for a lot bigger showing for us, we actually did a learn to duck hunt event. So we went out in the fall, a bunch of people never duck hunted, got permission on a marsh, took them out there. And yeah, got a lot of people hopefully hooked on duck hunting. That was this fall? Cool. That was this fall, yeah. How that, how that, like, how's that work? That's a big ask, I feel like, learn to duck hunt. Yeah, um, essentially, I had actually met a gentleman. His name's Lee Graves. Uh, he's actually one of the founders of the Wisconsin Waterfowler Association, so a big area around here. Um, and essentially, we just uh, I went on a duck hunt with him one day with a buddy named Chris of mine, and we ended up just kind of like hitting it off, talking every now and then. And throughout the idea last summer when uh, Ducky and I were actually on the phone, uh, we were just calling about Ducks Unlimited. And I was like, hey, I mean, he has this like beautiful, like little private marsh area and he's got a bunch of awesome box and blinds. Let's just ask him. I mean, you know, worst thing he can say is no. If we were to just ask him if like we could run something out there. And I guess he's been looking for stuff for years to get kind of more kids involved in like duck hunting and like, you know, those first time experiences. And yeah, worked out great. Got a couple of kids on their first ducks. I think we had, how many kids would you say we had like 20 or so? Yeah, about there. It was a really good turn. I was really impressed. Yeah, I was really was impressed good. too. Yeah, I big shout out to Jimbo Robertson. He donated a bunch of, uh, he's one of the DU guys. Uh, he donated uh, all the shells for the hunt too. Like That's huge, sweet. huge shout out yeah. to him. We're actually in the process of sending him a card in the mail. So if he sees this podcast earlier than that, like, you know, big shout yeah, out. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it took a lot of organization, but everything worked out great. Beautiful day to be out in the marsh and, you know, you just couldn't beat it. That yeah. was October? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. good weather. It was a week after Southern opener. I mean, beautiful. It was like 50 degrees, like sunny, a little bit of wind, lots of ducks moving. Like, it was just a great time. We actually had one kid that um, he shot a wood duck that was coming through, and we actually had an eagle swoop down and was trying to grab it off the water. It was so cool to watch. We have a video, and I mean, we could always share it with you guys if you want to, but yeah, it was super, super cool to watch. Never seen something like that happen in person. Always seen videos online, but one thing to see it in person is another thing. Yeah, it was really cool for me, especially because when I started running like for my chair position, we did a little learn to hunt. Like when I was a freshman, it was literally like we went out with like six or seven people to local public with some of the D guys. It was super small. It was something I was really passionate about bringing back. So when I came to college, I knew nothing about duck hunting. And just really want to get new people that experience because I've had a lot of people 
once I got in there, would see me walk into the dorms with like dog skis, saw my decoys, and just want to learn more about them. It was like, take me hunting, take me hunting. So as soon as that came out, got a couple of them out there, and it was super cool being able to like mentor them and put them on their first hunt, kind of like the old DU guys did for me. Yeah. And then it was super cool to see too, because not everyone shot a bird, but just like the excitement of like, oh, we're calling like heads down, heads down, just watching all these flocks of mallard fly over there. Like, that was so cool. Not even shoot. <laughs> i feel like seeing that for the first time would be yeah it's really cool something experience. else yeah, yeah especially if you didn't grow up doing that oh i always believe like i get so much more enjoyment personally seeing somebody else like shoot their first ducks like right. just the smile on their face they look like they're in disneyland or something like that like i don't know i live for that stuff at this point like i love taking new kids out well i can attest that to even my first duck however when i was with one of my buddies in the dorms like a week or two before my like learned to hunt when i actually shot my first duck and it was like one of those things hadn't seen like any ducks all day of course we're out there pulling the decoys and like five wood ducks just come like screaming in he like shoots out on misses he's like why didn't you shoot i'm like i was just watching the ducks <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool yeah. got eaten alive by mosquitoes oh, yeah. fell in the marsh i was like yeah, <laughs> like they're down to something dude. that's the experience yeah. for sure yeah so uh today's saturday when's your guys season end uh saturday or excuse me today is saturday so i think we have was it tuesday technically it is monday so monday. Mo the, after the third you can no longer hunt so, as of so it's our last forward. weekend yeah it's our december last 2nd yeah. cool and so just a little quick rundown we did some layout boat diver hunting this morning on yeah. Green Lake, Sam and I's first time doing that. You guys done that before or no? Yeah, I have a couple of times now, and it's just been a blast every time. Um, weather didn't exactly work in our favor today, but um, buddy Ben that was out today, um, he actually shot his first golden eye. He'd never shot a golden eye before, so he got on his first bird there. So that was super awesome to see. I mean, pulling up against the boat, and he is just like all smiles because he shot one. And I don't know. I live for that. I mean, I love that. <laughs> I was like, it's cool. funny we started off talking about that because I completely forgot that, yeah, that was Ben's first gold night. Yeah. And then I've never laid up a one before, so. So we're, we're on the same boat. Yeah, you'll probably no see it in a video of me with it, but, like, even just having the opportunity to, like, pop up and, like, shoot at two dogs, I was like, that's so cool. Like, it's something I've definitely wanted to do for a while and to finally be able to get that, like, dip my toes into it. Yeah. Super excited to hopefully do more in the future. Yeah. So we were a little, it wasn't as choppy today. You were saying the chop helps. Oh, yeah. Um, you really have to have, like, it was all glass for most of our hunt today, unfortunately. Um, only had, I think, we were expected to have winds up to 15 miles per hour today come from the northeast, and we were only sitting at, like, 3 to 5. Just wasn't ideal. You want a, just a little bit of chop to help break up your image when you're sitting so low to the water. So, you know, we always wish for a little bit better conditions. I mean, that's just part of duck hunting. Everybody wishes something was just a little yeah. bit different while there was more sun. No, that's right. That's exactly. Can you uh, can you talk a little bit too, just kind of about how those diver ducks work? Because like it work a spread. Because we we we've never done it before. We thought it was interesting. You just drive literally right to the middle of the lake with no brush, no nothing in the layout blinds. And can you just kind of describe how they uh, work the decoys? Yeah. So essentially, we start out by putting out these. Uh, we call them like UFOs or flying saucers. Uh, they're really uh big boats that just lay really flat against the water and they're all gray so they really help like when you're sitting down inside it looks like it's just a part of a wave coming over you um so set those up first anchor both ends down make sure everything's set we're not going to be moving more than we need to i mean obviously that's depend on waves i've been out on uh the bay a couple of weeks ago and it was just insane rollers out there with water coming over the back very wet day but you know saw a lot of birds so it's right that it's just a pursuit but once you get those bullets set up, then you start running long lines of decoys. So not sure if y'all can see behind me, but we got a lot of diver decoys here from Broken Bill Outfitters. Um, great phone decoy company. And we just, uh, we got, we had the opportunity to use all of their decoys today as well. And just, you know, had a great time. We essentially set them up in straight rows coming all the way up to the layup lines, making it almost look like a landing strip for them. And you know, just with divers, they fly so low to the water where usually when they're coming in, they're not like puddle ducks. They don't just want to sit in pods or groups or something like that. They essentially just want to go and sit right at the end of those lines. So we essentially just want to give them a little bit of space to sit in between each of those lines or file it right where they want to. So that's kind of how we set those up there. Yeah, I'll say divers too, especially compared to other ducks, they fly fast, they fly hard. So it's 
basically what everyone told me today is literally keep your eyes like three feet above the water because if they're going to come in and work those lines that's as high as they're going to be they're going to be just above the surface of the water and they're normally going to fly pretty much straight down your lines so we had like five different lines out today so the guys in the layout boat shooting essentially like you knew your five places that you're probably going to have shots if you had any it makes it tough though because like when they're coming in so low you kind of lose sight of them in the tree line yeah well, especially it was, and it was cloudy today was too, cloudy. which I thought made things tough. At least yeah. on, especially on the camera. Right. Oh, all you see is just a little dot way in the. It's like everything's gray, and then you just see yeah. gray moving faster, oh, kind yeah. of thing. Oh, so that's why you got to be super careful too with duck ID, especially that yeah. on because yeah, you see little really specks of gray, and if they're flying head on, I mean, it's kind of hard to see their heads. Like what a lot of guys have told me is look for the whites on the head, because then you can see like your bluebills, buffalo heads, golden eyes. But if they're flying straight at you, you gotta really know what you're doing right. make sure you're really picking your shots and if you don't know what it is pass on it it's Bro, a tough way to shoot too it is yeah like that or to think about it so i was in the layout boat and then it's like man yeah you were trying to sit up completely horizontal yeah. during the you're like flying and when you have to sit up like honestly go do some crunches or something like that <laughs> like you really want to work that you get some preseason work in yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I'm like gonna, a boxer i'm gonna disagree a little bit with that because i feel like like, I've hunted out of layout lines in fields since I, like, started duck hunting. And, like, if you were used to hunting a layout and popping yeah. out of a layout, I didn't have any issue. Right. But I can see, though, especially, like, on big water when it's really windy so with the say. waves. Like, that would throw me off a lot. Moving like, while you're trying to shoot. But, like, today it was pretty calm just sitting up, like, no issue. Right. Yeah, I was thinking, like, you see those videos of Great Lakes and stuff. That's that's what I was thinking. Like, today it was very calm. Yeah. But if you were up and down. Hitting weights. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, usually when you're, like, riding big waves out on, like, say, Michigan or the Bay, you're essentially, like, you're not just sitting flat doing, like, nice little rollers and all that. No, you're being jerked around by your lines, thrown up and down. And, you know, when you have a duck barreling towards you, it pulls away at 40 yards and you got to take a shot. You better hope. I have to leave the duck and trying to like account for moving all yeah, around the be tough yeah yeah it's all estimation and you just hope yeah. that you're just in between waves or something like that and it doesn't throw you off but <laughs> you know that's why they say a lot of times a diver hunting it's a box of bird like it is hard shooting oh, box of bird box of bird i've even seen people with like long tail ducks or old squaws say that that is the hardest limit of ducks you will really ever shoot is six drake old squaws because you sometimes are like mile and a half two miles from shore the wow that's yeah. unbelievable yeah that is nuts. yeah we don't even i mean there's hardly bodies of water where you can get that far yeah yeah i mean there is I, mean, I just think that's the thing people don't realize about wisconsin is you can get like the woody holes you have the fields you have your typical like very diverse and puddles and then you also have like all the open water yeah a lot right? of different types of water yeah so talk a little bit about that then how do you guys typically hunt during your season what are all the different you know styles of hunting you do? right like yeah. early teal yeah. like you guys were talking about cranberry right? yeah. and stuff. Like, well, to kind of start out this year, for instance, um, we did a lot of, I hunt on a cranberry marsh. I used to work on one back in the day and it kind of started off with like, oh, let's just bring our layup lines out there. We'll set up against the edge of these like, you know, really long dikes and, you know, ducks eat cranberries, something along those lines. There's enough water out there. Let's just kind of see what happens. So on like our first kick of the year, we uh, shot a three man and geese and that was a really fun time out there. And I don't know, usually just from there, you kind of move past, well, our season starts with geese and then you go to teal while well, they open at the same time or within a yeah. couple of days anyways. Um, and then once uh, northern zone opens, so Wisconsin is actually split in half. We open up the northern half before the southern half uh, just to kind of help migration. What time of year is that open? Uh, last week of September is northern opener. Then usually southern opener is like kind of depending on calendar year. Yeah. That's usually first weekend of October. Gotcha. Which is something too, especially being located in Stevens Point is super unique because the one highway, Highway 10, is the dividing line. So you drive like 15 minutes north of Point, you're in Northern Zone. Otherwise, you go anywhere south of campus, you're in Southern Zone. Right. Nice. So you can kind of hunt the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hunt all yeah. yeah. It helps a lot and it gives a lot more opportunity for guys too. I mean, it's a lot easier because, like I said, Meat Wildlife Area, it's only 25 minutes from Point. That is like the main place guys are going to be going. I mean, it's the first place across like essentially Highway 10 that right. everything opens up. So that's kind of where everybody from campus kind of goes and lots of pressure, but there's plenty of ducks out there and, you know, great conservation work being done out there, I got to say. Yeah, I was just say this year, the type of hunting I've done, I've been bouncing around a lot. So before September 1st, we really gung-ho, we wanted to hunt geese. We spent like weeks scouting geese, getting permission on fields. 
of course, like two days before opener, all our geese dipped. <laughs> Luckily, we found a little. <laughs> we found a little pothole last year when my buddies lives down in Madison. So we found a little pothole down there, completely by mistake. Like we were scouting geese, they took a wrong turn down a road. We're like, huh? There's a lot of teal in there. Sure enough, teal were there this year, so I was always kind of our fallbacks. We went, did like the waist deep muck pond for teal, and after that, really just chased geese until that northern duck opener. And then from there, I was like. I want to I wanna shoot ducks. Yeah. <laughs> love, right. love me a field hunt. Love me some geese. But once the meat opens up and you can hunt it, like, I'm not going to be anywhere else. That With that southern zone, too, like, once meat starts getting hit pretty hard or stuff starts freezing up, then you got the Wisconsin River runs right by our campus. So you can start hunting on the river and stuff. And then even south of us, we have Lake Piedmont, too, which is another huge lake a lot of people hunt, which also in southern zone. So... A lot of people that go out there, like, okay, well, gotcha. it's, it's a blast down there. I mean, there's so much water out there. Where you get such diversity of ducks. I mean, you start off early season, all you're going to see is, you know, your regular woodies, teal, and mallards in Wisconsin. And as it kind of progresses, I mean, you see it all. We, well, Ducky, tell them about your uh, cool bird you saw this year down on Pete Wall. Yeah, so this year on Pete Wall is pretty wild. Um, So my dad's a huge bird watcher, so he's watching. There's flamingos that were, like, by my like 40 minutes north of my house like along the lake shore of lake michigan so he went up and he was trying to see them then they moved and all of a sudden he goes oh they're on lake pete well go sees them like send me pictures he took like through a spot and scope so me and my buddy are on and like you know it's a pretty slow morning we have like we shot like two mallards the first five minutes we're like this is gonna be awesome now of course like nothing's flying around right well i will say one of the mallards was banned it was the first one of the mornings we're like oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah but all of a sudden yeah we're looking at these like five birds like standing in the middle of the water and at first we thought they were geese cause, you know sun's like just peeking off and we're looking at them we're like those look pink <laughs> so I, I shoot my dad a taxi because i find my iphone and he goes oh yeah you're sitting on like the opposite peninsula of where i saw him that's funny so i go talk to my buddy i was like dude the ducks aren't flying I was like we gotta go paddle over i was like no one's gonna believe us we gotta go paddle yes. over there yeah so we paddled we paddled like kept our distance obviously didn't want to mess with them but got close enough to take a couple p pictures and then you know are sending it to people and like putting it on facebook and people already thought it was fake they thought we like put f pink flamingo like decoys like, like the yard like, decorations like the yard yeah, decorations yeah, yeah, yeah. they thought we were like sticking those in the water to yeah. mess with people until all these bird watchers like no 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 like that's real <laughs> so you said it was uh we were talking about earlier you said it was a hurricane that blew them up here that's yeah that's what they think is there was a hurricane that was hitting like florida and some of those southern states and then they kind of started showing up there in like I'm going to get the states wrong. They kind of slowly worked their way up until they eventually ended up in Wisconsin, I That's guess. Nuts. Yeah. yeah, something I learned is they're, like, apparently really tolerant to cold. Which Flamingos you might, are. Which you, yeah, you yeah, wouldn't get that. Because everyone is, like, freaking out. Oh, my God, we got to get them out here. They're going to die. And all these professionals are, like, they're fine. They'll leave when they want to. Right. So yes, that makes sense, though. Yeah. I guess Lake Michigan, Lake Pete, and well enough food that was similar to what they normally eat that they hung around for a bit. So you're saying Wisconsin needs... A flamingo season. A flamingo tag, man. Uh, we, we all got the no season, but a special that. draw. They're still trying to get cranes. I think it's going to be a long time. Yeah. yeah it's going to be a governor's while for a flamingo. Yeah, we governor's tag. There we go. Maybe yeah, you raise some money that way. And then, so we struggled today. This afternoon, we tried to do a geese ice hole on a river. Maybe could have killed a puddler duck if it would have shown up, but struggled there so tomorrow plan is divers again is that what we're going with yes sir we are going right over on green lake uh really we're actually doing a little bit more scout we had a couple of the guys go back out and we found the ducks like we're at working this morning but hopefully we'll be on them get tomorrow and i'll obviously it's duck hunting you can never be 100 percent sure they're gonna call through but we've got a pretty good location on where they're gonna be flying this morning after watching them for a couple of days so talking weather tomorrow too right yeah snow no, so I mean, even today we were busting through a couple inches of ice just getting out, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, after getting the boat stuck a couple of times up on the ice shelves, they're jammed between them. So we're uh, we're in for a real Wisconsin like typical late season Wisconsin hunt, and uh, glad we're getting it on video too. I mean, yeah. big shout out to you guys, and Camp absolutely. To make this happen. Yeah, well, I'm so okay, you were saying last week though the weather was. In the, in the teens. That's what I was going to say. We almost got lucky. <laughs> yeah, like this, Funny is, this is warm for you guys, oh, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. We're used to having like, you know, almost a foot of snow on the ground. Yeah. Now, and like, That's you know, everything's iced up. You're, I mean, you're the, well, 
you know, vice president of ice fishing. I mean, you guys have a tournament going on next weekend. Hopefully, so. yeah. Hopefully, anyways. But yeah, like, this is just abnormal. It's been like 30 degrees today. And I feel like halftime, I'm out here wearing a sweatshirt. Right. Like, it really throws the guy off. So. Yeah, it's been a really weird season because when we started season, we were like in a drought and then we got like four inches of rain in three days. So, like, everything was flooded out and then just really haven't been getting the cold snaps like we normally do. Like, even before it got super cold and stuff started locking up, it'd be in, like, the 40s and 50s, and there was, like, just enough to lock up some of that stuff, but, like, two or three inches of ice on it. Then you could see today it was in, like, mid-30s. Right. And how'd that do migration-wise? How'd that treat you guys this year? It kind of hurt us, truthfully. Um, I mean, the goose numbers in Wisconsin, I think, were definitely up for what they have been in the past. Um, shot a lot more geese between, like, everything I heard from, like, myself personally and a lot of my friends that goose hunt. But duck numbers, I honestly didn't see them for, like, what we were kind of hoping to see this year. I mean, they've been, like, continuously kind of going down. And I don't know. I'd like to see a bigger push for them in the future. But, I mean, it was just a really hard year with that drought. There was just no water for them to sit on. So, you know, might as well fly by and hope for going south a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just uh, I just noticed, too, like, this year, to the amount of new owners we had, especially on the public. And I think they just got hit a lot harder than they had in the past. So... Even if we were still getting the same migration numbers as last year, I don't think they were sticking. It didn't feel like it. It didn't feel, yeah, it didn't feel like it. Although I will say it was super weird because normally like central Wisconsin, you don't really see too many like widgeon and bintail. And this year was like triple compared to what I usually hear about getting shot out there. Yeah. A lot less mallards. I mean, great teal population, woody population as usual. But like Ducky is saying, like it is just a weird year for like, we like to call them random ducks because usually we just get like, you know, your teal, woodies, and mallards. That's kind of our go-to around right. Wisconsin. And yeah, like you said, pintails, widgeon, long yeah. more have been getting shot that we've been seeing so far. Yeah, that is, that is kind of different. It's funny when you talk to guys from different areas, we've done some filming in different spots and like, it's so funny, like guys are like, you know, they never shoot mallards, but they shoot pintails yeah. like, all the time. And then you come to here and it's like a pintail is like, that's like a duck for you guys. Oh, yeah. You know, shoot I mean, of. That's something I always think about those guys. We met a couple of guys down from uh, A&M in Texas. Yeah. Texas and is big pintails. Oh, yeah. They were saying like pintails, widget, redheads. That's all they get down there. No mallards. Not. I haven't heard about much really? mallards down there. And I mean, usually whenever we get a shot on a widget, pintail, or redhead, like we're freaking out because right. we just don't see those around here. Like it's just kind of a, we don't see them. Right. 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 Then the diver population for you guys is cool though. Yeah, because yeah, sure. that, that diversifies things. Because there's guys who, you know, like you get to Arkansas, like they don't kill divers. So oh, yeah. Like it's, it's an interesting deal. Oh, see, so even if you want to talk about diversity, just in the meat of lines, you can go your back timber woody hole and only see wood ducks, and you can go to another flow that's like basically tw- like not even 20 minutes away, and you can be killing bluebills and ringnecks out of there. Mm-hmm. Or even you shot gold nine in the meat last year. Wow. So like the same duck diverse. we saw today. Right. We literally had a little spot where we were like sitting in the cattails and we ran two long lines off the cattails and mm-hmm. my body shot a gold mine. It was just like, what? Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Very yeah. diverse overall. Keeps y'all busy for sure. Oh, yeah. Here. Yeah. Uh, Spend half the time, you know, just trying to chase ducks and the other half's going to class. Or, you know, shoot, right. good. <laughs> yeah. Good. That's campus water found. <laughs> that is Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Okay. So off of that, um, talking about waterfowl and all that's good. What's focus on the campus half of it too you guys tell us a little bit about life at uw stevens point what's it look like to be a student there yeah so i'd say for sure one of our really big programs is our college of natural resources so like fisheries wildlife management forestry soils that's a really big draw to the university so with a lot of those outdoors focused majors you get a lot of really outdoor focused people so originally too when i was looking at schools obviously i'm looking at academics but like stevens point is a bass fishing team so you know i'm looking at like the college rankings of like how they're fishing because how are they at bass fishing uh they've been really good in the past it's kind of a little bit of a rebuild right now but we oh, a rebuild we i love that i love that the verbiage yeah. <laughs> like, i was it's like got, espn uh, analytics uh, like the no yeah, we got them landing. We got some guys on the team that are absolute hammers, like better at fishing than Oliver Beebe. It's just one of those things, like everyone's got class, trying to send them to all the tournaments. We got kind of screwed over with how they like redrew where all the tournaments are. So no one really wants to drive 22 hours to Florida. I was going to ask how far y'all travel for Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it kind of depends. Um, just saw the big, like, so like bass and MLF, just like pro fishing were on college series. And then for that, they determine where all the tournaments are. So there used to be like brackets. So for Central, it'd be like the Mississippi, like right in Wisconsin. So like 
everyone from Stevens Point would go to that. Right. I'd have people to run down to Lake of the Ozarks and Table Rock Lake in Missouri. Cool. But on this, big lakes. yeah. But on this year, it's been a little more like spread out all over the country. They got rid of those divisions. And that's why I kind of hesitated. You said, "How good are you guys at bass fishing?" Because we're really good at fishing, but you know, we're not fishing a ton of those national derps. Not as many people as we'd like to. Sure. Yeah, it's a timing thing though, and like, yeah, I know, a timing you gotta get down there and practice, mm-hmm. and you gotta yep. figure out where you want to go, and like, if you're thirty hours away or twenty some hours away as a student, you know, no, definitely, it's hard. But like Ducky was saying, there's so many like different clubs and organizations on campus that are all like, they can really find you like what you're interested in, or if you're interested in learning like a new hobby or something like that. I mean, Ducky got in duck hunting just by coming here and. He did have the name Ducky before coming. Yeah, I'd like to clarify, has nothing to do with duck <laughs> hunting. Yeah, it did just build up. You don't that. kill more ducks than anybody else. Oh my God, no. He might say it behind closed doors. But. <laughs> yeah, he's like going to say it on the podcast. Yeah. I heard it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know. I've always just had like a lot of, it's been a really easy time finding friends. This Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, you find anybody that's walking around that, I don't know, I mean, half the guys are just walking around and, you know, Carhartt right. jeans and, you know, sweatshirts and stuff. And it's so easy to build off conversations. You're like, oh, you're an outdoorsman? Like, you know, what do you like to do? And I mean, I think that's how I've met most of my friends at college, honestly, is just through classes and like meeting them through orgs. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the biggest thing for me is we have a whole like website of just every single club on campus. Like when I was a freshman, I just went through it, just looked at stuff. I was like, oh, that sounds cool. And you go to that, you meet a bunch of people. Or even just like walking around campus and like I was saying, it's a big outdoorsy school. So you see a guy walking around the fishing rod and they're like walking to your door with one to go talk to him, end up fishing with them, that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'd say people too there. Something I've noticed compared to like a lot of other colleges, everyone's just like super friendly. Like the time they're willing to talk Small to school, C3. Small school vibe, how, yeah. many, how, many, how many kids? Uh, I want to say about 4,000 on campus. We do have extensions and stuff like that going up to Wausau and Marshfield. So kind of hard to guess on actual class size but on campus there's about four thousand students that yeah that's like just that's small here. yeah yeah it's small compared to like i mean you guys are from iowa it's a lot bigger of a school yeah you were a bigger school yeah, yeah. much yeah. much bigger but but as far as friends and stuff like i mean four thousand yeah, kids so, like that's been so you're gonna know easy, everybody yeah. and yeah it kind of helps like deep down like i you know Mind you, I always did want to go to a D1 school when I was first coming to college. Had the grades for it and all that coming out of high school, but I'm very happy with my decision to come to Stevens Point. I love it there, and I wouldn't have traded it for the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, friends are absolutely amazing, and I'm almost graduated now, and I love my degree. I mean, I have had nothing but a great time at that point. Right, and your degree is what again? I'm on natural resources management with an option in planning, so I can do everything from helping to set up wildlife areas to doing community development. I mean, it's very broad. But at the same time, like, it's a great background and a lot of different skills. So I really, really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It sets me up for a lot. And Ducky? So I'm a hydrology major. So essentially what that means is we're really focused on, like, big picture water stuff. So, like, water quantity, looking at, like, how can we protect, like, our drinking water? How can we manage, like, large things like rivers and all that stuff? And so you get it in a state like Wisconsin that's so... Water heavy. Water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a great degree to have. And have you, you've done some internships, you said. I have, yes. Uh, give me, run, run. Through. Yeah, so last summer I actually worked out at North Dakota State University, and I was doing a project out there with them looking at how cattle grazing can actually be beneficial for streams. So they have a lot of invasive grasses out there that have really shallow roots that so cause all their streams to erode super heavily. So they were doing research on if you have cattle come in and actually like eat those out, how can like the native populations of plants will come back and ultimately end up stabilizing your stream <laughs> bank. So it's pretty interesting to yeah. see. And then that way too, it really helps out the farmers. It gives them an additional food source for their livestock. Mm-hmm. And then have you had any internships? Yeah, I actually had an internship last summer. It was a partnership with the uh, National Park Service and okay. Long Rivers Conservancy. Uh, I was essentially a biotech. I uh, went out and did a lot of like different field research, doing invasive species management and great time over on the St. Croix National Scenic Mm -hmm. Freeway. Just got to paddle around like, you know, you do 10, 12 mile stretch every day and you help find invasives, cut them down, spray them so that they don't come back next year. You know, all of a sudden the next day I'm doing a, they call it a triathlon where you essentially go and like kayak down a river for eight miles, go and set up some geo like monitoring or echolocation monitoring locations for bats and then you can take like a UTV through the woods for like a really long time, a couple miles way back in to set up another one. And 
then you have a five mile hike after that. I mean, all, all like, like a day. All in a day. Yeah, That's it, a full it, day. It was, it was like fifteen or sixteen hours, a couple of times. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was a great time. Like, love the feds, but that was kind of. Yeah, it was a great time to be able to get out and do stuff like that. I definitely would highly recommend getting internships through the feds. Yeah. And then do you guys feel like those experiences kind of overlap with what you guys are doing at DU too? Because like I know you were talking about the research and the banding projects and stuff. You guys yeah. have done a lot of like hands-on yeah. research and stuff in the outdoors. Yeah, that's definitely a really big thing our chapter has been trying to push is not necessarily just doing stuff in the classroom and talking about conservation, but applying it and learning about it in the field. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Ducky is our conservation. I was going to say, yeah, I can talk on that if you guys want. Yeah, That'd be great, too. yeah, because it's an interest. Yeah, so essentially that's my whole job is coordinating all the research. And we talked a little bit earlier about the parasite project that we're helping out with. So one of our professors, Dr. Orlovsky, is looking into duck parasites. Because essentially they can tell us a bunch of different stuff. So number one, we had a problem on the Mississippi River and it's still a problem. There's this parasite and these snails that the bluebills were eating. And it essentially like eats them from the inside and kills them. So her whole thing is getting as many samples as possible. The number one, see, can we find like the next parasite before it really starts to impact our duck populations. And then number two, they do a lot of sampling of like the food sources and stuff ducks are going to eat. So you can trace really specific parasites to really specific food sources. And with that, you can really kind of see like how, like what the ducks are eating. And they're doing a big study right now looking at scop and ringnecks, like out of the mead in central Wisconsin versus the Bay of Green Bay and how mm. those dynamics are different. Yeah. Is all is it all state uh, based too? Is it all? Yeah, ours yeah, yeah usually Wisconsin. state based. Yeah. Just trying to keep it like in Wisconsin just because, you know, it's kind of harder to like run oh yeah i mean Wisconsin. totally yeah i mean that right. with as college students yeah i don't really yeah. have that much time yeah. but you know we all try our best i'm just impressed involved. that you guys are getting that much hands-on via both school but then also in the yeah. bu chapter itself yeah. like because i think i think it is like it's easy to talk about conservation oh, but like to actually like put stuff into to action like i'm impressed with your chapter with the learn to hunt day or like, you know, this parasite stuff like that's, that's impressive real world application stuff. Yeah. I, I think it can out. be rare. It definitely helps out. We have a lot of really good partners mm -hmm. too. just, yeah. I mean, like, you know, the Mead wildlife area, we adopted it. We kind of work a lot with the Wisconsin DNR to be able to go out and do like some of our different banding projects or, you know, Dr. Sedinger on campus also has just helped us immensely. He's our advisor as well for Ducks Unlimited. Mm -hmm. So shout out to him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just, we've had so many great opportunities and so many people that are willing to just kind of like step up and help us with our chapter because, you know, we're trying to help out as conservationists and, you know, try and help the world as much right. as we can, while mm -hmm. we can. So, you know, if we can just keep that going, I think, you know, it's going to make the world a better place. Yeah. Even just talking about earlier, like people with similar interests on campus, mm -hmm. we're actually partnered with the wildlife society. So it's the professional society for all wildlife management majors. And we have a joint project going with them right now too that we just started this fall we're in town along the river we got a bunch of wood duck boxes donated which big thank you to scott mcfarren for getting those for us and then everyone that made and donated those but yeah it was super cool just had to like submit a proposal to the city and everything get everything approved then we literally got to go out hike them all in like two miles then put them up yeah, so as a, as a DU chapter. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, really cool. It was a collaboration with them. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but nice. it was a great opportunity just to like, you know, get out on a nice sunny day and, you know, make a difference. To yeah. Hopefully a couple of new duck families making their way into the air. Yeah. yeah I'm excited go. this spring too, like the maintenance and upkeeper to be looking at, like, did they get used? If so, like how many eggs are in the nest, like all that stuff. So it'll be really cool to see. Yeah. Absolutely. What's uh what time of year do y'all do those like projects? Uh, springtime yeah majority does happen to be in the spring just because that's kind of our way like in the past we've run some research projects yeah. on uh nest to secession excuse me um just for ones that we have around stevens point that we just have like march so every year in the spring we'll go out and i think it's like 15 to 30 boxes mm -hmm. somewhere in that range on you know we go through and check to see which ones you know have nests in them if they don't you know we make sure you know everything is safe no raccoons got in there put a little bit of new like cedar chips in there is make it ready for if a duck does happen to right. find it they'll have a place in a home so gotcha. you know as we can keep doing little stuff like that it should make a difference yeah absolutely yeah one day at a time i think for sure yeah spring too is also to we run our banding projects so we have a wetland right by campus that we have exclusive permission to to access so it's technically listed as private property 
But we have permission to go out there and we actually set swimming traps and then we'll catch ducks out there and ban them. Nice. Just to get people that hands on experience. As the DU chapter. As the yeah, DU chapter. Wow, cool. Yeah. And then, but is that, so like if that duck gets shot and they call that band in, well, it'll take them to. Yeah, it'll take you right down to Stevens. Point. That's actually really yeah, cool. Yeah, it'll say band well, in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Yeah, that's yeah. actually really cool. Yeah, and you guys as students do that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. How many how many students are in y'all's chapter? Um, we have about sixty active members that, you know, regularly come and attend meetings. Which is a great number. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, overall attendance for what we usually have between like everybody that has come to meetings and everything like that in the past year, I mean, we probably have over hundred and fifty. Yeah. Like yeah. Us and- I'm really happy with our chapter size and I'd love to keep expanding and growing. I think recruitment is absolutely huge and you know, what a better organization to do it for as well. Absolutely. I mean, all of this goes towards conservation, so you can't make it any better. Yeah. On that note, um, kind of move move in here to kind of the end of our podcast, but um, we kind of hit on it earlier when we were out there, but talk to me about the fundraising efforts you guys have going on at your chapter, and then also bigger picture, um, third term, and just like your guys' uh, – Kind of how you see you guys growing with DU, you two personally, uh, as a as a national organization. So I just threw a lot at you, but just uh, yeah, take yeah, it how you want to. Uh, but yeah, just kind of start off with um, we actually started uh, using some uh, bingo uh, games in Wisconsin to actually kind of bring in a lot more money for our Ducks Limited chapter. We actually just had one. What was it two or three weeks ago? Yeah. Now? And uh, yeah, we ended up raising over thirty three thousand dollars at a bingo night. Yeah, yeah. Bingo yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So how does that work, real quick? So like, yeah. you buy in, and all the money goes to do you? Or? Yeah, essentially, we just have a bunch of different raffles and like a bingo card that you know you got some pretty cool prize on it too. You can win anything from like you know Sitka jacket, Yeti buckets, guns, right. whatever you want. You have a whole banner to choose from, and I mean the prices aren't too bad. They usually include like you know a beverage and a meal and something like that but mm-hmm. lots of other raffles going around everybody's having a fun time and all the money goes right to you know protecting wetlands and associated habitats so we just want to make sure we can kind of keep that going but uh up next since we kind of got that our banquet is coming up in the spring uh so every year we have a really big banquet that we throw in steven's point and we're currently working on location for all that stuff coming up this year but we have a record of setting it attending attendance excuse me record setting attendance uh the past four years in a row now so okay i've been at here in yeah. the chapter and just growing an in income ever since then as well so that's kind of our goal is to just keep keeping these numbers up and we just want to keep growing and expanding so you know we can be up there with the big dogs at the sec schools yeah, <laughs> yeah do you want to touch on a little bit with our banquet too something when i went to third term last summer i thought was super interesting because we had a whole meeting they're basically just talking about oh how do you market your event and a lot of people were shocked that me and Logan Larry said, yeah, we go put flyers on every building around campus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Because the way we market it is we'll have student tickets, so it's a little cheaper. It gets those college kids in because it you know shows them a good time. That right. they're, they know their money is going towards conservation. Plus, a lot of them, you know, they know someone in DU, so we all just hang out, have a good right. time. Yeah, it's been a lot, like a really great effort. Um, but yeah, just flooding your town with like flyers. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just about you know. A lot of people use social media. Social media is a wonderful way to actually get stuff out there about your events and all that coming up. Like we started flooding Facebook, and that's how I think we actually got a really big attendance at our bingo this event. Um, but we just want to make sure, like you know, there are people that know use social media. Cool time. grassroots, yeah. grassroots. Yeah, right. So, you know, we just want to make sure that they still do have a chance to get involved and stuff like this. So, you know, the more times you go out to the community and, you know, talk about your event, like stuff like that. If you get on the radio shows every now and then, it doesn't hurt to throw it out there. You might pull an extra couple of people that come to your event and, you know, make some new friends, stuff like that. It's always a great time. I mean, I can't say I don't walk home smiling after every one of those. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Whether we're volunteering or just attending. (laughs) And then uh, I know... Third, talk to me about third term because I think a lot of people, I mean, I know a lot of people are going to watch this podcast, understand DU, but talk to me about third term uh, and what that means for you guys, like a college chapter and that whole. Yeah, so uh, third term is a leadership conference down in Memphis, Tennessee. It's at the Hilton down there, but we also do go and visit the national headquarters for Ducks Loaded as well. And uh, both Ducky and I had the privilege of going down there last year to represent UWSP and kind of show off, you know. You know, D3 college school, you know, we're actually doing pretty good. We ended up winning the gold All-American this year. So, you know, we raised well over $75,000, won the Grand Slam Award. So, 
it was awesome to be able to go down there and hang out, you know, all these other people from all these different schools from all over the nation. I think we had over, I don't know, it was probably close to 20 different states show up there. Yeah, it was wild. Colleges. That's a really good thing. Yeah, I mean, it was a great time. Just net- And it's only the college chapters. Yeah, that's only the college yeah. chapters. Yeah. But great networking experience. Like, I got to say, it, we pulled away so much. I was taking notes the entire time because there's a bunch of classes that you can take there to, you know, learn about your marketing. How can you market your events better? And, um, just how do you like talk to donors and people like that? Just a great opportunity to go down, really just learn about Ducks Unlimited, kind of learn better ways to make your chapter better. And I don't know, you pick up so much just from learning on how, uh, you know, other schools do it too. I absolutely love it. Yeah, that was my biggest takeaway, honestly. It was just getting to talk to other schools, see what kind of events they're running, what they're doing. Honestly, just getting to meet everyone, people from different states. That without DU, I probably would never have met. So you get to talk with them, share hunting stories, and it was just all around a really good time. Yeah, absolutely. Did, have you guys done any, like, crossover with, like, some of those kids that will, like, come up my state, I'll come out in your state kind of thing? Is that ever uh, Not out of state, but we are still friends with that. We met a bunch of the guys from UW Stout down there, so shout out to Johnny and the boys, but... Um, <laughs> Johnny and the boys. Johnny, Johnny and the boys. Like a band. Yeah, the Scotty yeah. boys, but they're cool. yeah. I was just say they're all calling us at third term. So we have a group chat now. It's like all our like chairman and committee members, all the stout guys. It's called the Scotty boys. Stout, stout what? Oh, uh, University, University of Wisconsin yeah. stout. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're Wisconsin, but yeah, it's a lot easier to meet other people from your state. Like I would have never met these guys. We hadn't. Yeah, exactly. Or so you, and you already know, know you all have the same interests. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Exact same event. You always have something to talk. About. Exactly. You know, we're all united over a cause. Right. Right. We all love conservation, and most of us love duck hunting. And right. And that's not time to market. You know, all of us love it deep down. For sure. Yeah, that's really cool. And then um, just kind of wrap up on it. Uh, I know you're going to graduate. Mm. You're ducky a junior. Yeah, so I still got three semesters left after this so, one. So you're going to be so involved yep. with oh, yeah. the DU, UW Stevens. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what kind of... Talk to me about goals or ambitions or just what do you see the next three semesters for you guys there? I mean, goals, definitely. We have big shoes to fill. It's like Logan mentioned with that gold All-American award last year. That's like the highest award you can get at third term. So we had a really good bingo to start out, but just really making sure that we're doing everything we can, like grassroots social media, promote our banquet. I mean, working with our RD, getting all our sponsors, all that ironed out. And I think, honestly, just the way it's been going, especially with that bingo night, we have the opportunity to raise a lot more money for the Ducks. And then, ideally, next year, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring for uh, chairman at DU. So, hopefully, we'll see how that goes. I don't know. But um, if I was elected chairman, I'd just like to see, you know, the same stuff going where we're continuing that learn to hunt, getting kids out, continuing giving people those research opportunities and hands-on skills, and then continuing to raise money to protect our waterfall. Yeah, outstanding. And then, Logan... You're going to graduate, uh, Yeah. what, in like 10 days? Oh, yeah, it's coming up. It's middle of the month <laughs> now. It kind of really snuck up on me now, yeah, but yeah. Fun, fun season. Done yeah. before Christmas now, and God, it is. it just really snuck up on a guy. I'm so, yeah, so I kind of love that, though, from the perspective of a leaving, where are you, the chairman or the yeah, president? The okay, so as a, as a retiring chairman, uh, getting to step into, like, the real world, kind of like, what are your ambitions, or how do you think that, you can stay involved with DU or your plans, kind of. Yeah, um, essentially, I mean, I'd love to get a job through Ducks Unlimited. I mean, that is, like, the perfect goal for me. I, like, had such a passion about this cause that everything about it, and I'd love to keep that going. But even if I were to get a job, I know I'd be involved in my local DU chapter. I mean, it's always really easy to find out about your DU chapters in your area as well. Half the time, you can just Google your hometown or your towns near you, and... 90% of the time you're going to be able to find a chapter that's close to your like area and great way to meet friends. I mean, I've met so many amazing people like just from our chapter and going to different events and I don't, I just love it. I mean, there's nothing better than Ducks Unlimited in my opinion and I mean, that, that's, a, that's a lot, but <laughs> that's that's a lot. Lot. that was heavy. That was, that was heavy. But it was good South I mean, it's yeah, an I mean, important I mean, deal, I mean, you know. Most of my friends I've met through DU, and right. I mean, I kind of grew up in it. Like, my dad was a chairman kind of growing up, so I kind of met, like, you know, a lot of my friends' parents and my friends through DU kind of growing up. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, DU has played a major factor in my life, and I'd love to teach Yeah, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Um, On that note, Sam. Yeah, no, it's, that's about it. It's, I thought that was pretty good podcast. You guys did a heck of a job. Thank you. You've made our weekend here with y'all easy. We've appreciated the hospitality. Big day tomorrow. We're going to kill some. We're going to kill some. Thanks tomorrow.
Arkansas. <laughs> can always well, you guys are going to kill him. Yeah. Well, we just Old blood. Yeah, we're just filming. So, uh, with that, this was Campus Waterfowl with UW Stevens Point. Logan, Ducky, thank you guys. And uh, I think we're signing off for this episode. Yes, sir. Y'all come back. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely.